What do you got to do in order to do this little little fraction here? What do you got to have? Decimal. Decimal zero and a decimal up top. Sixteen goes into fifty. Where are you going to get? Forty-eight. When you subtract, you get two. You'll have to add a zero. Sixteen goes into twenty one time. Subtract a four. You bring down a zero. It goes into forty only two times. Subtract, you get eight. Bring down a zero. Sixty goes into I'm sorry, sixteen goes into eighty exactly five times. So you're gonna get a five. It's going to be 80. If you subtract, you get the remainder of 0. So your decimal is 0 .3125. Did you get 0 .3125? Yeah. So here's the, here's the issue. You had this whole number here. That's going to be a whole number here. This was your fraction part. That's your decimal equivalent to your fraction part. All you have to do is tack this part onto this number. 3.3125 is your answer. 3, 3. 0 0.3125, 0 0.3125. That's the way your, your mixed numbers can be changed into a decimal. How many people feel okay about that? If you didn't like that way, there's another option for you. You can convert this into an improper fraction. Notice that's exactly what we had before, right? If you convert that to an improper fraction, it'll work out to the exact same thing. Exact same thing. It's just you're, you're finding that three twice. That's just a little extra work. Are you okay so far? Yeah. Hey, what's bigger, 5 sevenths or 0.72? How do you know? Because I'm guessing. <laughs> Wait, how'd you get that, Rachel? Okay, so is there a way you can just look at this and find out which one's bigger? No, not really. That's a decimal, that's a fraction. So if I, if I convert that, if I convert this to a decimal, then would you be able to tell? Yes. This one, it's easier to convert a fraction <laughs> to a decimal than is a decimal to a fraction. Because a decimal to a fraction, you have to simplify. Fraction to a decimal, you just simplify. How do you convert decimal to a fraction? You put the 72 over 100. I showed that to you a couple sections ago. And then you'd have to reduce it. Okay? So that, that'd be a little bit more tricky because then you'd still have to do work and find a common denominator to tell which one's bigger. That's very annoying. Otherwise, change that to a decimal, then you have none of those issues. So if we change that to a decimal, We'll get, of course, 5 on the inside, 7 on the outside, 5.0, that's a point up on our quotient. Goes in 0 times. How many times does 7 go into 50? Please play along up here with me. You're going to get a 1. Bring that, that down. How many times does 7 go into 10? Once. Now, we already dealt with a, a 7, okay? It's going to go on for a long time. But can you already tell which one's bigger? Yes. Yes. Yeah, look at the decimals. This is 0 0.72, this is 0 0.71. Which one's bigger? So you don't even have to convert this all the way if you don't want to. If you're just telling which one's larger, convert it to the point, the, I'm sorry, the place value, to where you can distinguish which number is bigger and which one's smaller. Of course, this would be our bigger number. So convert it to a decimal and then uh, determine which value is actually bigger. How many people understood that? Good. thing we get to talk about in our section here, we get to talk about order of operations. What, what is the order of operations? Hemdos. Hemdos is right. What's the first order of operation, folks? Good. And then? And then? Oh, wait. Is it multiplication and then division? No. Those are tied together. Good. Then? You remember that? And you remember how to do these rules with our, our decimals will be just fine. Let's practice just a couple of them. I'm not going to give you very many. We're just going to do a couple. Meaning like three. We'll do three.
There we go. <laughs> so let's start over here on the first one. We're going to do these together, so don't worry about rushing off and doing one on your own. That's not a problem. We'll do them together. First thing, what's the first order of operations that we're going to do here? Parentheses. So let's do parentheses. Do it off to the side if you'd like to. Somehow we need 9.2 minus 1.1. How much is 9.2 minus 1.1? 8.1. So we have negative 0 0.5 times 8.1. What do we do next? Multiply. Good, because that parentheses is really just holding that number in there. There's nothing in there. There's no exponents. The next thing we have is multiplication and division. So off to the side, we're going to multiply 8.1 times 0 0.5. If we multiply 8.1 times 0.5, we get 5, we get 40. Hey, where does that decimal go? Does it go between the 0 and the 5 or the 4 and the 0? 4 and 0. 4 and 0, very good. Because we have two decimal places from the right, that's 4.05. So our answer is 4.05, true or false? Negative. False. Ah, so false. Because this had to be a negative, we're going to have negative 4.05. Are you guys okay with this? Yes. So really just combining a couple ideas. How to add, subtract, multiply, divide exponents with our order of operations. Now let's look at our next one. What's our first order of operation here, ladies and gentlemen? Exponents. Well, now we'd say parentheses, but that's just holding a number up there. So parentheses are kind of accomplished already. What's the next thing we do? Hey, can you do, can you do negative 1.3 squared? Is it going to be a positive or a negative answer, do you think? Oh, positive. Good. You have a negative times itself, right? right? A negative times a negative equals a positive. So when you square a number, that's saying whatever my answer here is, it's going to be positive. Are you with me on this? Yes. So do 1.3 times itself off to the side if you'd like. So 1.3 times 1.3. You'll need a place value holder, you'll add. You should be getting 1.69. Did you get 1.69? No? Yes, no? How am I getting 1.69? What's 3 times 3? What's 3 times 1? Place value holder. One times three? One, six, nine. How many decimal places do we move? Two. From the right hand side says one point six nine. So one is it positive or negative one point six nine folks? Positive. Right. Why positive? Because negative times negative. negative. Good, yeah, you're square any number. So negative times itself gives you positive plus two point four. Can you add one point six nine plus two point four? Yes. Sure. Do it off to the side if you want. 1.69, 2.4. Of course, we're lining up our decimal place. That's going to be a 9. A 0 will carry 1. You get 4.09. That's right. Not too bad. Not too bad. How do you feel okay with our order operation so far? Good. Now, the last problem you're going to have is going to have all of those operations encompass into one. This is something you can expect on your test. Something just like that. Oh my gosh, what's the first thing we do? Exponents. Remember that a fraction implies parentheses. So this is really in parentheses, and this is in parentheses. Now for us, that means we're going to have to do our numerator first. The denominator is pretty much already done for us. It's down to one number. So when we do our numerator, we do have parentheses, but it's just holding in a number. If I take 1.2 to the second power, that's my first order operation. That's our exponent. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this as 20.06. I'm not going to touch that yet. I'm not, not yet. That we haven't, we're not doing anything with that yet. Minus, I'm going to do this problem, 1.2 squared, off to the side. Now look at the board with me, please. Look at the board. Do you notice, I should be on the board right now. <coughs> do you notice how this problem is different than this problem? This one, the negative was inside. It got squared. It went away. Is this minus sign inside? No. So I'm going to have a minus sign. Now. This is just 1.2 squared. Just do that little piece. How much is 1.2 squared? 1.44. 1.44. Very good.
divided by 10, and then over 0 0.02. Oh, question, question. If I divide this by 10, so or operations would go parentheses, we didn't really have any. Uh, exponents, we already did that. Then multiplication, division, before addition, subtraction. So am I supposed to subtract here or divide here? Divide. Now you're dividing by 10, and there are some problems on your homework that kind of illustrated this. Look, if you divide by 10 or divide by 100, all that comes down to is moving the decimal in the appropriate spot. Okay, so if you're dividing by 10, look what's going to happen. 1.44 divided by 10 says, oh, this little section, I'm going to take this decimal and move it right or left? Left. Times by 10 would be right. Divide by 10 is left. So this is 20.06 minus, I'm going to put a zero up there just so we, we see the decimal. 0.144. Okay, you tell me. What's the next operation I'm going to do? Uh, subtract 20. Definitely subtract. So do 20.06 minus 0.144. Do that to the side if you'd like. Just got to line up those decimals. Of course, we'll need to add a zero over here, which means we're going to have to borrow. So we'll get a six in thousandths place, a one in the hundredths place. We're going to need to do a double borrow for that one, though. So that becomes a one. This becomes a nine. This becomes a ten. We subtract one, we get nine. Of course, we have that decimal, 19.916. Were, were you able to get that? Yeah. Yes. Raise your hand if you feel OK with it so far. Okay, I'm assuming if you're not raising your hand, you don't really feel okay with it. Are you okay with it? Okay, good, good, good. So our numerator right now is 19.916. Our denominator is 0 0.02. What's it mean when I have a fraction 19.916 over? Divide. So set up your division problem. What goes on the inside?